Okay, we're going to go over this exercise set today, 55 through 62. We're going to find vertical and horizontal asymptotes of rational functions. Uh, calculators could be helpful because that's what it says. Use the method of your choice. And one of those is by graphing. And I want you to have a calculator anyway so you can at least check your answer. Because you can do all of these, I think, algebraically. But you want to at least corroborate with your calculator. And to me, the best way to learn out of this thing is to try to, to do this mentally or somehow without a calculator and then check with the calculator. But if you put this in a calculator, so having said that, having said all that, I'm going to suggest that we do this first one using a calculator just to see what it looks like. So we go here to the calculator and we have this function here which I graphed in the last class and then you you graph and you see this right yeah. so what would be the vertical asymptote for this function um, what is that one. one x equals one okay Carmen said some she said one but it's going to be x equals one and that's the thing about vertical asymptote equations they are x equals one and what about the horizontal asymptote? Y one. equals one. Y equals one. And how did you find the horizontal asymptote? Yeah. So you looked at the graph? <laughs> so, so yeah, so you just look at the graph, you see the thing lining up to one. Okay, so, so what, can we just say graphically determined and leave it at that? Yeah. Okay, graphically determined. So we have that and that. Now what I want to do with the next one, it's a very similar type of problem, but I'm going to, I'm going to use analysis first on number 56, okay? So here we are on 56, and we want to find a vertical asymptote. What do you have to have to have a vertical asymptote? You have to have a, a split or a break in a function, right? So will a function with all real numbers have a vertical asymptote? A function with a domain of all real numbers has no vertical asymptote. Okay, how do we, what do we do to find our vertical asymptote here? What do we do with this denominator? Cancel out x. Can we cancel out x here? No, we can't. How do we use our denominator to find our vertical asymptote? Okay, so, so Will said x cannot equal zero. Okay, that's for a discontinuity, but when we translate that into the language of what the vertical asymptote is, that's going to be what? x equals zero. So this would be a discontinuity description, and this would be how you call the vertical asymptote. So, so technique, set your denominator equal to zero, solve for x, and those will be your, that'll be your vertical asymptote. Now is it possible to solve for the denominator and not have a vertical asymptote there? It is. Okay. Not, what kind of discontinuity will not have a vertical asymptote? I had the discontinuities t-shirt yesterday, right? Yeah. Which kind of discontinuity will not have a vertical Spot asymptote? Point. A point discontinuity. Or uh, somebody said jump too. And technically that's, that's right too, because that's not a vertical asymptote either. But most of the time you'll see a point discontinuity where you don't see a, uh, a vertical asymptote. Now what is our horizontal asymptote for this? Y equals? One. One, and I want to give you a. Did you just look at the graph of that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you algebraically how to determine that. What a horizontal asymptote is. It's y equals the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity 
of your function. In this case, x minus 1 over x. Okay, what's going to happen to this function as, we'll just use positive infinity. What happens as x gets closer and closer to infinity? What happens when x gets real large here? What is this going to get close to? If we say let, let x equal 10,000, right? Okay, very, that, that's right. So we'd have 1,000 minus 1, so we'd have, we have 9,999 over 1,000, right? Or 10,000, which is going to be very close to 1. Okay, so we can, so we can do that. Uh, one technique that I use for my calculus classes, and this is pre-calculus, I'm, I'm going to share this in a preliminary method here, it's called Betsy. Betsy, okay, what does Betsy stand for? You don't know. Betsy stand, stands for bottom equals top use coefficients. If I could spell coefficients, that'd be nice. Okay, yes, bottom equals top, use coefficients. So in this case, what you do is you take this x, you look at the highest power of x in both the numerator and the denominator. Do these both have the same power of x here? You have x to the first power over x to the first power. So our answer is simply going to be 1 over 1, which equals 1. So this way, when we play our Kahoot game later on today, too, you'll be able to use that for, for rapidity. So, so Betsy. And there's another rule, too, I'm going to explain to you later when we work through these problems. Okay, uh, 57. Go ahead and work that one out. Okay, for 57, do you have a vertical asymptote for this yet? Can I borrow Chromebooks? Can you borrow Chromebooks? Oh. I, would, I would lend you a Chromebook if I had one. Oh, you don't have your Chromebook card. Sure. <laughs> what, is a, what is a vertical asymptote here? Do we have one? Uh, three, three. X equals three? Okay, that's right. Did you solve that algebraically or graphically? Kind of both. Kind of both, yeah. So I like you I like hearing it both. But if you do this, right? You get you get three is equal to x, right? Okay, what about a horizontal asymptote? Y equals negative one. How do you get negative one? Yeah, and what happens is, for Betsy, Angel's right, but, but if we have, this is x to what power? To 1, right? And down here is, x, is negative x to the 1 power. So what is our, what is our horizontal asymptote? It's going to be y equals uh, 1 over negative 1, right? So that would be our horizontal asymptote. Questions on that one? So the power of x? The power of x? Is that what 58 is? Yeah, what, what kind of function is, is 58? A, now it's two honors, we went over this last year. What kind of function is this? Did it toward the last of the year before we went into COVID hibernation? What kind of function is this? Or 
it wasn't during COVID hibernation. It might have been. It might have been during. Yeah, I think it was probably. It was during COVID. Yeah. Okay, this is what's called. Did you are you able to put this in the calculator? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and if you put this in the calculator, you saw something like this. You saw the thing start like this and go like, right? So what is our what is the domain of this function? All real numbers. So vertical. What do we know about a vertical asymptote? If we have all, there is none. So we'll abbreviate, we'll say vertical asymptote does not exist. What about horizontal asymptote? Like zero. Now, remember we talked about boundedness? Where is this function bounded? bounded below, right? At, at y equals zero. So that's going to be it. And this is going to be the, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1.5 power of x is equal to zero. What is the limit as x approaches positive infinity? What's the limit as x approaches positive infinity? Yeah, or, or does not exist. Infinity or does not exist, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay, ready to go on from 58? Okay, 59. You got, you got two vertical asymptotes here? Positive and negative one. Yeah, so so the way Kayla said you could see you could say x equals plus or minus one, right? You could say that. Right? Or you could write them separately. But either way is good. Right? Good job, good job. What about horizontal asymptote here? Y equals one. So horizontal asymptote. Okay, Angel, why do you say that? Because it will be close to one. Wait. Okay, guys, Betsy, right? One x squared over one x squared. So we're going to have one over one equals one. Betsy. And uh, I guess we can just leave it at that. Anything else on this one? No. Okay, we have this one. Use a method of your choice to find all or not. So what, what's going to be, what's going to be a vertical asymptote for this one? All right, more than asymptote here. Looking at the calculators. Adam's on his calculator on his phone. It's really a calculator. It looks like he's doing improper phone use, but it's not improper phone use because I know you use this calculator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a complicated huh? Okay, what, so Angel made his observation. Anything, anybody else? Angel says, Angel says no I, no I, vertical asymptote. We will say does not exist. And algebraically, why? Usually, looking at the algebra, why does a vertical asymptote not exist? Can our denominator ever be equal to zero? No. And that's exactly what we need to have a vertical asymptote, right? So we can't ever have that, and so we will not have a vertical asymptote. What about horizontal asymptote? Zero. What zero? Y equals zero. Y equals zero. Okay, this is, good. this is, remember I talked about Betsy? This introduces another thing that's called Bobo. You know what Bobo stands for? He's a monkey. Bobo, no. Bobo means 
bigger on bottom equals zero. That's what Bobo means. Here, you see we have a lot, we have a bigger function on bottom, right? We have we have 4x to the 0 power over x squared, so we are bigger on bottom, which means that we are going to go toward 0 as we go toward infinity. Because right, it, right on the, uh, right the y-axis, we would have 1, we'd have 4 over 2, or 2, right? We'd have 4 over 2, or 2, but then we would go like this. And then on the left, we would go like this, right? Is that what you saw when you graphed it? If you graphed it, yes, you did. Okay, next, 61. Vertical asymptote x equals three. Yeah. What did you get, Ken? Two. two. What two? X equals two. Should get x equals two. Okay, let's look at this. We got x cubed minus eight is uh, is equal to zero, right? So plus eight, plus eight. So you get x cubed is equal to eight. What next? Uh, cube root. Cube root of x cubed equals cube root of eight. So we have x is equal to two. Now why is it not plus or minus two? Why is it not plus or minus two? Because of what? Okay, if we had if we had x squared minus four equals zero, our solutions would be plus or minus two, right? Right? But why is this not plus or minus two? Because we took us same thing, right? Took square root equals four, square root, square root. We have x is equal to plus or minus two. Why is this not plus or minus two? Because it's a cube root. And what about a cube root? It can't have. You're not going to have a plus or minus yeah. in a cube, in a odd numbered root. Okay, that's it. Now, what about our horizontal asymptote? Y equals zero, okay. And why is that? Because bigger on bottom, right? Okay, now we are at a 62, so, so work on 62. So vertical asymptote x equals negative two. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know. Yeah. And how'd you figure that, Angel? Did you graph it? Okay. Did anybody figure this out without graphing yet? And what did you get? You got negative two also? Okay. So the bottom of the bird, what happens all you have to do is set the bottom and then solve the whole Well that's that's the first thing you do, but there there are little complexities to that too. And let's is that what you did? Did you get plus or minus two when you did that? No, I was just asking. You're just asking? 
But let's let's do this. Let's go ahead and set this equal to zero, right? So what do we have here? Right? So we're going to have, if we solve for this, we're going to do x plus 2 equals 0. And x minus 2 is equal to 0. So we get x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. But this is the only one that appears. Why? Why do we not have a vertical asymptote also at x equals 2? Have you figured that out yet? No. I will, I will try to show you. This, this is the answer, by the way. Okay, because if we factor this function out here, what do we get? 2 times x minus 2, right? And down here, we can rewrite this in factor form as x plus 2, x minus 2. What happens here? So we have cancellation, right? So what kind of discontinuity is this? x equals 2 is what kind of discontinuity? That is not a vertical asymptote that Hannah told me earlier and others. What kind of discontinuity is it? It is a point discontinuity. So not a vertical asymptote, but a removable discontinuity. And so that's why, that's why we only have one vertical asymptote. Okay, what is going to be our, our horizontal asymptote? Y is equal to zero. Bigger on bottom, and so that becomes apparent. Okay, any, any wrapping up questions on this one today? Okay. Very good.